We're celebrating the 40th anniversary of the film West Side Story. My guests are Rita Moreno and Marnie Nixon. Nixon dubbed Natalie Wood's singing part in West Side Story. Nixon also did the singing for Deborah Carr in the film The King and I. Rita Moreno won an Oscar for her performance as Anita, the girlfriend of Bernardo, the leader of the Puerto Rican gang, The Sharks. Moreno now is one of the stars of the HBO prison series, Oz. She was one of the few actors in the film West Side Story who played a Puerto Rican and was actually from Puerto Rico. The reason was that there simply weren't enough Hispanic, forget Puerto Rican, Hispanic male and female dancers at the time who could do the kind of professional job that was needed for Jerome Robbins' choreography, which is, uh, you, you might have noticed, extremely complex and very difficult. There just weren't any. The reason there weren't any, I am surmising, is that a lot of Latin kids, Latino kids in those days, didn't have the money to take those kind of classes. They were a lot like, in a way, like the street dancers of years later, uh, the, the, the kids who danced on their backs and all that kind of stuff, uh, who had talent but didn't have the training. So as a result, the, the sharks, uh, gosh, there were just a few of us, really, who were truly Latino, who were able to get the part. Did you have to do anything to look more, act more, or sound more Puerto Rican? Uh, they, they made me use an accent, which I wasn't thrilled about because a lot of us obviously don't have them. The thing that really bothered me the most is that they put the same very muddy, dark-colored makeup on every shark girl and boy, and that really made me very upset. And I tried. I tried to get that changed, and I said, look at us. We're all, you know, many, many different colors. Some of us are very white. Some of us are olive-skinned. Some of us actually have black blood. Some of us are Taino Indian, which is the original Puerto Rican, and uh, nobody paid attention, and uh, that was that. I had I had no choice in the matter, but I was not happy. And when I saw the film recently and saw George Chakiris, this beautiful guy, Greek guy, <laughs> <laughs> who looked like he had fallen into a bucket of mud, I just started <laughs> I started to giggle. <laughs> now, Marnie Nixon, you dubbed the singing for Natalie Wood. Did mm -hmm. did she know when she got the part that she was going to be dubbed? that she wouldn't be singing herself. No, I think um, the problem always during the picture was that uh, I think it was very unclear that she didn't know how much of her voice could be used. They didn't tell her that gradually, I guess as they worked with her, that that maybe it wasn't going to be good enough because they were afraid to upset her. And uh, it created an atmosphere of... Um, I felt very uneasy, and um, w when we recorded the the songs, actually, we recorded them. They said they were going to record them with her doing the complete songs with maybe there were combinations of me doing the high notes within those complete recordings of hers, and then they would record me doing the complete songs, and then they said they were going to combine those electronically later on, which I knew was not really possible to do. I think they created a, a monster, really, in her because they, she would listen to her takes and she didn't know, it's very hard to know whether you're good or bad if not really being a singer and these huge speakers that magnify any kind of uh, discrepancy. And, and anyway, and they would tell her afterwards, oh, Natalie, it is just wonderful, absolutely oh, so wonderful. <gasps> and then they would turn to me and wink. And I just felt like, I I wanted to cringe. What what did you think uh, of her takes? Did you think her singing was good? Did you did you think it needed to be dubbed? Well, you know, I can't even remember except that I knew that they probably would all have to be thrown out. I think what happens is that when you're not really trained in music theater or in in opera, that you can sing your own things in your own tempo and your own 
songs and in your own way, in your own key. But when you're doing a Bernstein score, it's written like an opera. I mean, you have to have the rhythm exactly right. And she had to uh, acquire an accent, which then I had to uh, try to acquire to because I had to be her. Um, I heard I'm her getting... recordings. Uh, I heard her recordings because... Uh, uh, well, we all had to have s- stuff like that at home, and uh, actually, she had a very bad voice. She wasn't a singer. Right. And it's not even fair to judge her on her singing because she wasn't a singer. Uh, she maintained and obviously insisted that she at least get first crack at it, which I suppose is fair. I think what was terrible is what Marnie just related. Yes, that, it's you know, terrible. Would, oh, that would, she would finish a take and they'd carry on as though... Uh, uh, Amelita Gallacurci had just, uh, <laughs> you know, come back. That's dreadful. So what was her reaction when she was told, well, it's going to be dubbed by Marnie Nixon. Your voice isn't going to be used in the songs. Well, I think um, from what I've heard, now, I, this is only secondhand. I, you, you I only there. heard it th- mm-hmm. through the musical uh, powers that be, and they said that she was just absolutely furious and stomped out of the studio in a total rage. But I guess they knew that that would happen, or anyway, there was nothing she could do about it legally. So um, then, actually, I never really saw her after that, except uh, months later after the the picture had had been released. Um, so I didn't have any relationship with her after that, so I never knew, and she certainly didn't take it out on me. Rita Moreno, do you remember Natalie Wood's reaction when she found out that she was being dubbed? Only what I heard, which was that she was deeply, deeply disappointed, mm-hmm. and uh, it's certainly understandable given the way in which they handled it. Uh, I think she really believed she was going. it was going to be her voice, mostly her voice, with... Marnie doing, as she says, the tough notes, the hard notes, the long notes, and um, it must have been it must have been horrible for her. It's, it's so unfair, and I'm I'm no fan of hers, but uh, I don't think uh, I think they, they they dealt with it very very poorly. You're not a fan of hers? No, I, d- I don't think she was right for the role. She didn't think she was right for the role. It's one of the reasons that uh, she was not terribly friendly to the cast. And uh, not because she was never, ever rude. Let me make that very clear. But she was aloof. And the reason I realize now that she was so aloof is that she felt so out of her element, which indeed she was. But the cast took it in a different way. And uh, it's a shame because it made for um, a surprising amount of uh <sighs> Walking on eggs and, and tension around the set. I mean, was it? I can't say it was horribly stressed. We we had a terrific time, but there was always one person missing, and that was Natalie. Well, well Marnie Nixon, when you were doing the singing, it must have been complicated, since since Natalie Wood thought she was singing for real. You know, she she was lip syncing to her own um, uh, recording. And then, what, did you have to sing in such a way as to match her lip movements? Well, you, that's usually the, the process is that it's always the actress that has to come in and has the job of mouthing to her track or anybody's track. And, um, so when she had filmed it to her track, the problem was also that she wasn't in sync with her own track. And I said, well, how am I supposed to fix it up if her lips are already not in sync with the orchestra? And they said, well, you figure out a way. <laughs> and so uh, that, that's the hardest way. I mean, it's, it's so much better if it's pre-recorded and decided, and then she has to do it, and then maybe you just fix up a few little spots. But it, this was in every single song, practically. It was it's that also a, a question of feeling how that person feels when they're singing those particular lines. Uh, yes. I was not able to sing A Boy Like That. I was dubbed by one, another person for A Boy Like That for a very simple reason, not because I can't sing, but because at the time I was practically a coloratura, which is a very, very high, rangy voice, and I could not, for the life of me, and believe me, I tried, I could not reach the low notes in the beginning of the song, which starts, A Boy Like That, who kill your brother, and then it goes up very high to very smart. Maria, very smart. 
And I couldn't reach those low notes. So they finally said, well, uh, we're going to have to find somebody for you, which, of course, <laughs> broke my heart. And they brought in a, a woman named, uh, at the time, a girl named Betty Wand, who sang for me. And the, let me tell you how difficult that is. I sat in the control room trying to tell her, because we, I started this conversation about feeling how Anita was feeling at that time. The Betty Wand was a singer. She was not an actress who sang. And she just couldn't get it the way I wanted it. Oh, I that's wanted... terrible. Oh, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking oh. because I wanted to sound, it should have almost been a growl, a boy like that, you know, barely sung. And she ended up sounding, and whenever I hear it, I, I just, my, my, my stomach knots up because she sounded almost like a cliche Mexican. She was going, a boy like that, who killed your brother. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of ever singing the song that way. And I'm not, by oh. the way, I'm not making fun of her. That's the only thing she was able to do, and no one was able to help her, even though I was there to do it any differently, because we must have done take after take after take after take, trying to get her to do it the way I wanted it done, and the way, you know, it should have been done. Well, Rita Moreno, what was it like for you to be singing this duet, knowing you were being dubbed by somebody whose performance you didn't really like, singing this duet with Natalie Wood, because she's singing I Have a Love and It's All That I Have, <laughs> right or wrong, what else can I do? And she's being dubbed, and she doesn't know she's being dubbed. So, you know, what a what a kind of odd circumstance to be doing this. J and, just just uh, just to clarify what's happening in the scene for listeners who, who might not have seen the movie, um, Natalie Wood, Maria's uh, boyfriend, Tony, has just killed... Anita's boyfriend uh, at a rumble, and he didn't mean to do it. He didn't want to do it, but 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 he did it to revenge the murder of his best friend. And so uh, Anita, you M Rita Moreno as Anita mm -hmm. is saying, you know, a boy like that who killed your brother. You know, how can you be in love with him? And Natalie Wood is saying, I had a love, I have a love, and it's all that I have. So that's. But she, Anita's not only saying that; she understands when she comes into the bedroom that. This girl, Maria, who was a virgin till then, right. has slept with her boyfriend's murderer because she runs to the window, looks yeah. out, Anita does, and sees him running away from the building. So it's, it's just so many things going on. Not only that her, her, she just found out that Bernardo has been killed by Tony, but that Maria, Maria of all people, has just bedded with this young man. Marty Nixon, you dubbed uh, Natalie Wood's part on this duet. What's your experience of this duet? You know, I have no recollection except it might have been one of the duets that, and maybe Rita would know, that was planned for me to do all along. So maybe she was singing to my voice during the filming. I've forgotten that. You know what, uh, you know what, Marnie? I think your voice was on that one, because if it yeah, had I think been, it was all me. Yeah. Because uh, if it had been Natalie, it would have been even more difficult to do. <laughs> well, I don't think that. Come to think of it, I don't think she could have even stretched into that. I think it was just uh, the musical directors uh, approved of it. I think I heard her sing it in the rehearsal studio, and got a feeling of what it was supposed to be. And then I just recorded it. And then she had to approve of that. And I I don't know, I guess she did, because I don't think we had to take it over. But well, I it were, really wasn't in a duet form. I mean, I never saw Rita in the, rehears in the recording studio at all. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really do a duet together. Well, well, now I have to play this duet that we've been talking so much about. <laughs> so now uh, you're going to hear a very Mexican girl. <laughs> right. So imagine on screen we're seeing Natalie Wood and Rita Moreno, but mm -hmm. what we're hearing in this duet is Marnie Nixon and, and Betty, Betty Wand. Wand. Mm -hmm.
a duet from West Side Story with the voices of Betty Wand and Marnie Nixon. And my guests are Rita Moreno and Marnie Nixon. Marnie Nixon did the dubbing for Natalie Wood. Rita Moreno played Anita in the movie. I'm wondering, um, after, after the movie was shot, did Natalie Wood not want anyone to know that you, Marnie Nixon, had dubbed her voice? And how did you feel about how much credit you should get? And then Rita Moreno, I'm wondering how you felt, felt about people finding out that in one song, in your duet, that, that your voice was dubbed. Were you, were you, did you not want people to know that? Well, I'll tell you, no, I didn't want them to know. I was at the time, I was very, very so embarrassed because it, it sort of seemed to cast a shadow on the rest of the stuff that I did sing. And I got over that. I mean, that's just ridiculous. But I'll tell you what is disconcerting, and I, I'm going to find out about it soon. Apparently, um, I think it's Columbia Records, has Betty Wan's name on all of the stuff that uh, I did, too. And that's uh, <laughs> that's made me very, very unhappy. Rita yeah. Moreno, I want to ask you about another scene. Mm-hmm. There's a scene toward the end of the movie, um, after your boyfriend Bernardo has been stabbed. Um, Maria, the Natalie Wood character, asks you to send a message to her boyfriend, Tony. Mm-hmm. And this is right after the, the I Have a Love duet. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you, you, you go to, um, the candy store, to the candy store to give a message to the owner there and all the jets are hanging out there mm-hmm. and they start taunting you and the implication is that they've raped you too. I think that's oh, the yes. implication. Yes. Yeah. If it had been done uh, a few years ago, that's what would have happened. Right. But it's all, it's all kind of stylized and choreographed. Can you talk about that scene? Gee, I'm glad you brought that up because that was uh, a seminal scene for me uh, and some, Interesting and personal, emotional um, um, pond scum came to the surface. <laughs> we rehearsed that number for, uh, as we did with everything in that movie, uh, for oh, weeks. And then we got to the shooting, which took about, I would say, about seven days. And at some point, having the boys constantly uh, cursing me out and throwing me around and calling me things like spick, and garlic mouth, and uh, a pierced ear, apparently opened up some wounds that I thought had been healed years and years and years before then. And I remember that at that point, and I think it was in the middle of shooting some part of that scene, I stopped and I sat down at the stool at the candy counter, put my head on my arms, and started to sob and cry, and I could not stop. I must have cried for about 45 minutes, and just there was no consoling me. I was inconsolable. And um, it's funny, as I speak of it, I start getting tears in my eyes. Um, And the boys came to me and said, Oh, Rita, please, you know we love you. You know we love you. Please don't cry. Please stop. Oh, the audience is going to hate us. And I couldn't stop. And finally, Bob Weiss called lunch. And, uh, you know, I calmed down, obviously, after lunch, and we got it all done. But there is a huge piece of my soul in that scene. It's, it's all of the terrible things that happened to me. Not like that, but it was symbolic of all of the terrible things that, have hap- that happened to me when I was younger that apparently just um, inundated my soul and seared my soul, and uh, I was as surprised as anybody. When you were able to start shooting the film again, do you feel like that personal connection deepened your performance, or, or did, did it get in the way of it because it no, was so it, No, it didn't get in the way. It, uh, I think it, it deepened it, and uh, by the time we got to the part of the scene where the uh, doc, the candy store owner, comes in and stops the the rape, the the, the symbolic rape, and I go to the door and say, don't you touch me, because I think they were saying something like, don't let her get away. And somebody puts their hand on my shoulder, and I turn around and say, don't you touch me. Wow. That was filled with every terrible anger that I have ever experienced in my life, that line. It didn't get in the way. (laughs) Can you talk a little bit about the choreography that Jerry Robbins worked out for the rape scene? Uh, Jerry had uh, an ability, which is rare. 
even now, to choreograph for character. In other words, any step that Anita might do, say, in, in America or in the Mambo at the gym, was not a step that he would ever have dreamed of giving to some other character on the other side, for instance, to the jet, a jet girl. And um, he worked that out with us. He was a meticulous, crazy man. He was meticulous with respect to what he wanted. The problem was he didn't always know exactly what he wanted. He just wanted it to be perfect. And Jerry had several versions of each section of each dance. So that, for instance, if you wanted, if you were rehearsing America with him, uh, he would, after you did one version, would say, okay, now let me see version B of section two. So you were really learning anywhere from two to three other dances beside the original one. That's how he worked. And he would watch it and watch it and watch and then say, okay, now let me go back to section one and do version A of that. He wanted to get the very best he could out of each section of uh, these dances. Mm -hmm. And that's how the, the, uh, the rape scene also happened. It was a question of, of throwing me around and when they would throw me around, when someone would grab my, my uh, blouse to try to tear it off, when somebody would lift up my skirts to humiliate me, all that kind of stuff was very, very planned. Um, any thoughts on the fact that the 40th anniversary of West Side Story, shot on location in Manhattan, coincides with the transformation of Manhattan after the World Trade Center attacks? Oh, I'd like to say that, that one of the thrills was seeing that opening shot of the skyline of New York City pre-World uh, Trade Center and having the audience suddenly, the, the relevancy of where we were at that moment and of seeing New York in its this wonderful helicopter shot and having people suddenly burst into applause of cheers that really... It was it was about the relevancy of the story and but the relevancy of here we are here and all of the current thoughts were piled on top of that. That to me was exciting also. It was in, immensely resonant. It was really the audience just went crazy with that opening shot because This was, it was at the Radio City, Radio City Music Hall fortieth anniversary ago. screening. Yeah. 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 It was it was amazing because they it's as though they it was a Manhattan they wanted desperately to see. Right. Well, thank you so much for giving us West Side Story. It's such a wonderful film. And um, uh, thank you so much for your performances, and thank you for talking with us. Great it's to be been with a, you. It's been a treat. Rita Moreno won an Oscar for her performance as Anita in West Side Story. Marnie Nixon dubbed the songs for Natalie Wood. Turner Classic Movies will celebrate the 40th anniversary of the film Saturday night. They'll show the film and feature interviews with some of the stars. <laughs> ¶¶